Okay, in section 2.4 we're going to learn about the tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant graphs. And let's start with the tangent. So I have a chart here on the left where I have taken um, quadrant 4, right here, quadrant 4, and there I've got negative pi over there, and then I've taken quadrant 1, right there, quadrant 1, and um, so I put them back to back there, and all I did is take our exact values and turn them into some decimals. So when we graph the tangent, recall that the tangent is the sine over the cosine, and I'm going to be concerned with the values in this column. And I think using a decimal chart just kind of helps you see what's happening. Um, so when we graph the tangent or we understand the, about the tangent graph, uh, there are some key parts to the tangent graph. And the first one is a, are the asymptotes. And the asymptotes, in fact, let me get this out of here. I need a little bit more room. Asymptotes um, is where your function, any function, but in this case, in particular, the tangent, where the function is undefined. Okay? And an asymptote acts as, um, it acts as a limit or uh, as, as um, something that the graph approaches. So everywhere that the graph is undefined, there's two places right there, negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, those are where our asymptotes are. And there's pi over 2. And they occur also at negative 3 pi over 2. That's a dotted line I'm drawing there. there so the graph approaches it but never touches it. It's undefined there. All right, the other key part of a uh, tangent graph are the x intercepts. And the x-intercepts occur where the function is 0. So I'm going to do that in blue and I'm going to circle those. So we've got 0, we've got pi, and we've got negative pi. And then to understand this section of the curve, let me show it to you in red here. Understand this section of the curve. Look, look at what's happening to the decimals um, when you start at zero, here's your quadrant one. So you have just over a half, and then one, and then 1.7. So you can see how it's increasing, and it's just curved nicely like that. They do the opposite in quadrant four, so they decrease like that. The period of tangent is pi. You already know that. Oh, let me switch colors there. So the period of a tangent is pi. So that means for every uh, distance pi in the x-axis, I'm going to get one complete cycle. So from negative pi over 2 to pi, that's one complete cycle. From pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2, that's one complete cycle. So one complete cycle looks like that of the tangent. So in this particular graph, or picture, I've got three cycles shown there. Um, it's also interesting to note, you know, you can have a cycle go from, uh, it doesn't have to go just from asymptote to asymptote. It could go from x-intercept to x-intercept. That's a, that's a cycle or a period. And notice that you get the top half here and the bottom half here. But it then starts repeating it. Okay, so this is the, the tangent um, function, and um, we'll talk more about how to translate that in a later video.